Okay, so this next uh, next one we're going to do is a little bit of a, a brush up for for your qigong. How do we how do we cultivate qi internal energy in Wing Chun? What does it mean to sink the qi? What does it mean to cultivate qi? What is qi? All right, so we we connect the willpower, focus our will, focus our will in our eyes, and we put it onto the breath. As soon as you have it in the breath, focus it into the stretch of the body, whether you're doing your form, whatever it is, and initially I want you to put it into the stretch to hold the ball because your hands are so sensitive you can feel energy first there and then willpower, breath, stretch into the space between your hands. Breathe in, expand the ball, breathe out, compress the ball. Now there's a synchronicity between my movement of my lungs, my rib cage. as that expands I expand the ball, as that contracts I compress the ball. So they're synchronized. So I'm breathing in and out in a synchronized way, expanding, contracting the ball, expanding, contracting the ball. Now as your willpower gets used to focusing on the breath and on the stretch, a feeling of magnetism is going to start forming in your hands and in the space between your hands. There's a magnetic fluid. So you're expanding a wave of magnetism, you're compressing a wave of magnetism. If you do the full building the ball uh, Qigong uh, video, You'll get the gist of all those uh, different feelings that come out of it and then your mind will fuse into it and recognize, okay, I am energy. Once you recognize that your mind is energy, it can move and control energy and you can start working with it. You go discernment, identity, will. So you've got to go to those, those three stages of working with it. Once you're in that, that feeling, from there, we just hold the feeling, we disconnect the breath. You pay attention to the feeling and the rhythm of breathe in and breathe out and the feeling changes from a long wave pattern to just a vibrational that wave pattern. So you just sit there and observe it and forget about the breathing. Once you're at the point where you can just observe the vibratory nature of it, you're going to move in one of two directions. Your awareness is going to experience that as heat and sort of like a, a slight burning quality to it or you're, you're going to experience it as magnetism. So we have the electric expression, the heating expression of, uh, of, the, of the gin, and we have the magnetic cooling contracting expression of the gin. Whichever one it is, find the balance so you get a cold heat. And this cold heat is a balance of electromagnetic energy. The electric wants to heat and expand, the magnetic wants to cool and contract, and when you get the cold heat there, you're right on the flux between electric and magnetic. It's a good place to be. Because if you're doing any of the drawing in energies, you want magnetism. For the outward energy, it's electric. So your yang expressions of outward and your yin expressions of inward come from that center of balance of the jin, of the vitality of the energy. Okay, so once you're at that point in your training, if you've built up the base feeling, the rhythm of the breath, you've just observed it, and the rhythm goes from long to just a vibratory burning, and then you find the coolness inside that burn, you're at the flux point of the rhythm electric magnetic, electric magnetic. You want to be right in the middle. Once you're at that point, then you go, okay, I'm going to put this into my form. So you, you take a posture. So you do your double gansa, and then you stretch the whole body, pay attention to that, that cold heat. And you feel the vibratory nature of that energy. And then from there, you just slowly release your muscles and let that vibratory heat, cold heat, move through the shape and just move into your next posture very, very, very slowly. Once you're in your next posture, hold that posture and observe it. Now you go through your whole form beginning to end. Mind pays attention to the energy in the shape. And then you very slowly change shape. Now, if there's any flexion that you move fast and the muscle contracts, it pulls your mind out of the energy into the body. So the movement has to transition very, very slowly initially so that your mind doesn't get pulled out of the feeling of energy. Then perform your whole form in holding up feeling. When you start getting to the point where some movements are clearly yang and some movements are clearly yin, let's say if I'm doing horn sounds, the yin, so I'm going to pull the joints in. And then when I go into closing the hand, whether I close it on the vertical or, or the horizontal, then there's a yang out. And then there's a yin in. I pull the joints open to withdraw. So identify 
pulling the joints open to create magnetic inward force, pushing the joints open to create yang outward force. And my feeling through the form expands and contracts the energy out and the energy in rhythmically through the form to simulate the function of each movement. Horn sow, for instance, is an inward magnetic energy that pulls in before it shoots back out and that magnetic in before the spiral comes back out again has a pulling of the joints open and then it releases the electric out of the magnetic pull. You load the slingshot and release it. When you hit the target, the electric stick energy goes in and you go back to sticking again. We're going to cover these electric and magnetic phases more and more. You, it's best to discover most of these yourself rather than be taught them. I'm just going to go through the principles. When you discover them, you know you're on the right track. Someone tells you, do it like this, 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 and you're too contrived in your thinking, the contrivance breaks the chi. You want to feel the chi and let it become intuitively obvious, ah, oh, Hunsao is magnetic. If I do this movement, it's a magnetic pull to the core and then a release back out again. Best to find it through, through training the principle and let the principle express itself in form. Okay, so you've um, focused your will on the breath, breath and the stretch. You found the rhythm of the feeling of energy in and out. If you don't, go to the Building the Bull Qigong video, get the feeling. Pay attention to that. The rhythm goes from breath rhythm, magnetic on the in-breath and electric on the out-breath, to a small vibratory burning feeling. Sort of like there's a light on and you just feel that light. It can be a yang radiating outward light or a cool light coming in magnetic that's contracting. This will often depend on your personality. So we have a yin and yang here. Find the midpoint, so you have cold heat, cold expansion. All right, so this midpoint between electrical and magnetic will start expressing itself through your form. You start the form just feeling that feeling and then slowly, very, very slowly moving through it. A bit like the way Tai Chi moves through the form, but we're doing it slower than Tai Chi and we're just paying attention to vital energy. This isn't Chi yet, this is still at the phase of Jin. We have to slow the energy down and reticulate it before we get chi. Then we have to give it to the power of gravity before we can sink the chi and tighten the dr drum skin in at the chi level. Now we're tightening the drum skin at the jin level. The chi level is much softer, the jin level is much more taut when you tighten the drum skin. Okay, so you've gone through the building the ball, you've got the feeling of the energy there, you um, have observed the feeling so it moves from a big rhythm to a small rhythm. You put it into your movements and you very, very, very slowly just pay attention without allowing muscle flexion to break the feeling. And then you just move through your form. Now, however your form is, is done, you do it at a speed at which you can continually feel the energy. Once you've done the whole form, you're going to start to feel parts where maybe you've, you've parried out, you've drawn across and you want to do a vibratory palm strike where the rhythm wants to increase. Just allow yourself to experiment with those rhythmic increases and observe how your mind breaks awareness of energy when you speed it up. And then you have to learn how to speed it up while maintaining awareness of energy and having the energy fueling the acceleration of the movement and connecting your body weight into it. This is very important. So mind here is moving Jin, vital energy, reticulating it through the body and we're transitioning, we're doing what they call muscle and tendon changing. It's moving attention from muscle movement to tendon movement. Now, tendon is only one facet. It's tendon, ligament, fascia, everything elastic in your body conducts energy at a very, very fast speed. If there's no resistance holding back, it's a superconductor. Energy moves really fast. So we go from muscle-based movement to fascia tendon ligament based movement, muscle and tendon changing. So this is one of the first steps in an internal journey, is awareness of energy and moving energy from a muscle based way of moving to a tendon ligament based way of moving. And this is where you get connected mass vibrating through your body really fast. If you've been training the video I did before on connected mass through a set of bathroom scales, you would be starting to get to a point where you can put, put a big percentage of your body weight on your hand, on your on your elbow, on your knife, on your palm, uh, on your hip, on your knee, 
on a front kick and you can measure it. You go, this is how much connected mass I got. Now when I internalize that and wave the energy out as a pulse, I know how much mass I have. Now I'm starting to get speed and mass working together. That's force. When you hit something, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna do some damage. So you, you want to look at very, very common sense mechanics, look at the internal mechanisms and get an intuitive intellect of how all these come together to form uh, how, you, how you train. Now, the forms are a dictionary. They're not something you train to get good. You train repetitive loops with your partner and you spar with your partner and you stop and you make corrections, you develop timing. You do fire gin exercises, you do everything internal with someone to get good. Because fighting is about dealing with people. Uh, Self-defense is about dealing with attacks. It's not about forms. You get good at what you do. If you get good at dealing with a person's force, that's what you're good at. If you get good at a form, you're good at a form. You're not good at dealing with attacks. So don't spend too much time on the form, but spend enough time to memorize the dictionary, because this is your dictionary, and be able to reference your dictionary. But while you're practicing that initial process, then you want to do it very slowly as an internal energy cultivation exercise to do your form. It doesn't matter what lineage of the form you do, you'll find as you tune into the energy, the circles and the, and the way, way your whole body moves together will just start to um, synchronize intuitively and you'll get micro changes which create macro changes. So what do I mean by micro macro? Is if you stretch internally to, to make a make a horn sow rotate, your horn sow, like some people do this, arms locked, elbows locked, shoulders locked. There's no connected mass. There's no no gin vibrating through the body. As soon as you have vital breathing, there'll be a micro movement in your elbow. Your elbow and knee will flex together just an inch or so. And that'll connect your whole body weight onto your hand. Try it. Get on a, get on an elastic band, pull out to the extreme, and then just do a micro movement of horn sowing and dropping your elbow and knee and squeezing your elbow and knee together and you got more body mass and power on the elastic band. So these micro movements in the form are the core of your power for macro power. It comes from micro. Remember Wing Chun is doing small container big power. So in order to do that these small micro movements to, to create big power have to use a Fibonacci spiral. The core of the Fibonacci is a small spiral it produces a big a big force on the end. So micro to produce macro. So we're going to investigate each one of these micro movements within each movement and start breaking them down further and further so that you can get to the essence of what powers an internal art. And in this case it's powering Wing Chun. All true internal arts go from micro fascia tendon ligament movements to produce large movement. Wing Chun do it in the most efficient way that I've seen. Okay, thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next video. Uh, have fun training.